I'm going to assume that you have a proper model that you've been following along in the previous videos on how to actually export from the games. Uh, please don't follow this guide if you downloaded an XPS off of DeviantArt. It will not work. There is data stored in the actual mesh that you need to have exported the model from the game to properly have. The XPSs on DeviantArt don't have the data. They don't have vertex colors. They don't have vertex normals. Just, just please don't try to use them and then try to contact me saying, hey, it doesn't look right. That's why. Export the model yourself. Please follow the other previous videos. Or if you have a, you know, a source that you know that they work, use their models. Okay. Sorry, had to get that out of the way. So, after you have your model, you've separated all the materials, we need to apply the shaders. We're going to go to File, Append, you will find wherever you downloaded the shaders to. As you can see here, there is now a single master shader. Uh, and then, ignore this, this is just a development shader. Um, it's just this one here. So, we'll go into Objects, and we want to import the sphere of materials. Uh, you, can, you can import everything, but the sphere of materials, it will import everything automatically. Uh, but then we'll just drag it off to the side and you can see we have the new materials. Uh, I'm going to try to be consistent and make sure that they all the game files are all on the sphere of materials from now on instead of having separate files for all of them. So just try to make sure you check here. Because we're working on a fighter's model, we'll actually just copy the fighter's shader onto the base. Just go to file, or this thing, copy, click on this, and we'll paste it onto base. If we go to the renderer, you can see it's just completely black so far because we need to actually go through and apply the textures. We'll copy decal slash damage. I think you see here it's decal slash damage. The reason there's a slash is because this one shader works on both the decal and the damage. They both use the same shader. Uh, you can just delete your damage mesh, it's fine, but this one shader works on both of them. That's why they're there. And we'll go into here, and we need to, and Cooler and Frieza use this metal, or matte cap. Uh, so we'll paste that onto here. That's the little bits on the head, the arms. Uh, some characters use a matte cap on their swords in Grand Blue, but that's what they are. So we'll go into the base, and we need to actually apply the textures now. Uh, I'm going to just change my timeline to the shader editor. If you don't know how to actually, if you don't have the timeline down here, if you don't know how to drag it in, you just click on the corner, and you just drag it up, drag it to the side, something like that, and you can change it. But I'm just going to join that back down so it can really easily work. If I zoom in, you can see I've uh, changed things up a little bit. Uh, there's more settings now. Uh, these settings down here, if, if things have changed, uh, I pray that you will be able to just infer what I'm talking about here. There's just some color settings and then settings that control the shadows. But we need to first apply the textures. So we'll go through and do that. Do base, the SSS, ILM, and we'll do detail. You need, for fighters, you need all four of them. But, oh no, it's completely shaded. Because we need to set color space to linear on the ILM. Right here, it says color space sRGB. Change it to linear. Bam. Instantly looking fantastic. Uh, the if, if you might have accidentally hit this X, uh, this UV2 should be set as UV2, UV map 2, whatever your the second option is. Uh, you can go through and double check to make sure they look right. Uh, it might, you know, take some a couple of the options, but it's one of the options. After you've done that, we'll move on to decal. Zoom in, move around. Go ahead and apply decal. Metal. This base is the same as your character base. And then we'll do the metal. And as you saw there, metal needs to be set as color space linear as well. But it's nice and vibrant. Uh, as you can see, uh, you might not be able to see it because of image compression, but there is a slight darkening gradient going on in this direction. Uh, if you want to rotate that around, there is this setting oop, right here. This Z 
you probably can't see it moving around, but may, maybe you can. You could, that's how you rotate that. Uh, they use that for some kind of different different rotations and whatnot, but that's how you do it. And then we'll go to damage. Damage is a fun one because you have to actually find the texture in the game files. It is not in this, as you saw, if I even knew when you go to a texture, it's not there. It's not with the character because you need to find the texture. As you can see here, Kara, common, common, effect, mesh, damage decal. This is where it is in Fighters. Uh, in Guilty Gear, I packaged all the textures up uh, so that they're with each character. If I recall, every character in Guilty Gear has their own damage decal, but uh, that's where you find the damage deck texture. So we'll open, and I will just actually quickly export that out. There we go. Do -do -do. And there we go, see? Nice and good, nice and pretty. Uh, if you don't want the decal or the damage to actually be visible, uh, you know, you can just select it, paste, or s separate it out, and then you can just hide it. Uh, that's what I just do. But that's how you apply all of these. It's everything except for the outline, which we will go into on the next video, actually. Uh, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, it should be up sometime later today.